I have here with me the key to computing the entire skinning matrix. When I press R, nothing should happen. Yeah! That right there is the sound of success. I'd spent the last week wrangling with a little issue known as vertex skinning. It's where you take the vertices of a 3D model and move those in relation to a bone joint. That looks pretty straightforward, right? <sighs> Pain. I'm gonna spade the details of the whole process since it is quite literally the most tedious, boring, but at the same time, most bloody difficult thing I have ever encountered in my whole two years of C program. But you see, here's the real kicker. It turns out I didn't even do it right. This entire thing was a complete fucking fluke. <laughs> I got too excited. Yes, it was working with just the normal bind pose, but the whole point of this thing is so you can apply animations to it and move the bones. But when actually trying to do that, Sorry, man. I thought that was it. I thought that was it, man. Back to the drawing board. I was honestly feeling just so exhausted about this whole issue. I've spent the better part of two weeks trying to figure this out and get those bones transforming correctly. I'm kind of just feeling burnt out. I just feel like shit. Looking back on it, it was probably because I thought it was a good idea to quit caffeine in the middle of all of this. Get the fuck out of here. Never again. I really just want to make a game. I can't make a game until this animation system is done. But then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. The man himself, the founding father of indie game development logs, provided me with some words of encouragement. As he so happens, he went through the exact same struggle and it turns out he made an entire goddamn tutorial series on it that I just have not seen up until this point. But even after all of that though, things you still weren't looking too good. That's so close. That is so goddamn close. The good thing about live streaming all of this though is that I can essentially get real-time feedback from all of you smart people who are just sitting in there watching me pull my hair out. Okay, well, you fucking get what I mean. If it is a particularly tricky problem though and no one seems to have an answer, since there is only roughly about 200 of you in there at any given point, which TV forward slash Randy, by the way, live from 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. AEST every day, then I can just scan the comments of my latest highlight video and look for a lead that way. I should really just try and draw them as lines for debugging purposes. That's probably the best way of doing it. By the way, if you didn't know, I post regular highlights of my work sessions about three times a week, give or take, over on my second channel. So if you like this kind of content and want some more regular updates, then go ahead and turn on notifications over there and choke a cheeky little subscribe. Link is up here. And while we're on the topic, if you want to make sure that you don't miss a monthly video over on this channel, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell as well. You won't be spammed to share with it since it is only once a month. And uh, yeah, these are kind of just like summary videos of all the highlights. I guess. The summary of a summary. I noticed you guys are on the screen now. How cool is that? Kind of actually looks like we're live streaming and not just recording this. <laughs> So that comment I found before gave me the idea to try and probably render out a full debug skeleton so I can see what's going on. And to accomplish that, I had to essentially copy over all of Ryan's current code for sending all our model data to the shader. Who the hell is Ryan, you may be wondering? Well, he's an absolute lit co who has just been such a goddamn good mentor for teaching me how to program in C. He's also developing a game engine called Telescope, which is the very same one that I'm using to develop my game on top of. And uh, right now I'm balls deep in his 2D rendering layer, just prodding around. Anyway, so I wrote up the new debug skeleton rendering code so I could send that off to the new shader. But in the process, I had to actually get rid of a couple variables and make it a more stripped down version since it's just the bones we're rendering, not the actual entire model. One of those variables being a little fella known as origin underscore shift. Hmm, that sounds an awful lot like it would be shifting my model's origin point. I sure hope that's not the root cause of literally every single frustration I've been having with bone matrices these past two weeks. There is absolutely no way. <laughs> ah! Animations. I just accidentally fixed animations. That was just about the dumbest anti-climax I've seen in my entire life. Or well, have a victory muffin. Mm. We can kind of just take a moment to celebrate. All right, celebration's over. Now we gotta make a f***ing animation system. Let's go! Before we move on to that though, there's probably a handful of you still wondering why the hell we're even doing any of this. I thought this was a 2D game. Why the hell was he implementing 3D animations? That doesn't make any sense. There's this game called Dead Cells, right? And the devs of that game used a similar technique, which took the animations and rendered that out frame by frame into a sprite sheet. A nice pixel art image, but for a fraction of the cost. And as a result of this, Dead Cells has some of the most fluid animations I have ever 
ever seen in a 2D pixel art game, hands down. But, 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 it still suffers from some of the caveats of baked frame by frame animation, aka flipbooks. We're just gonna refer to them as flipbooks from here on out. Say we make a bunch of flipbook animations, right? Idle, walking, running, crouching, etc. It's impossible to get really smooth transitions between these animations without adding in some extra transition frames to kind of blend between the two, right? Okay, fine. Let's just do transitions then. Yeah, no. As we develop the game more and more and add in more animations, these guys really start to add up, exponentially increasing the amount of transitions you need to do in order to have every possible animation state flow into each other nicely. Okay, so what's the solution to all of this then? Well, there isn't one. You just have to not do transitions and deal with this. <laughs> or so you thought. What if, instead of playing frame by frame flipbooks, we take the raw Ronald in all of his three dimensional glory and put him directly into the game engine? We then run a shader program on the graphics processing unit to shrink him down into his final pixelated form. Most players will be none the wiser. They'll look at the cover of the box at their local EB Games. Oh, Randy, what's in EB Games? Bloody GameStop, you fat freedom fuck. They'll look at the cover of their box at their local game store. They'll think it's just some ordinary indie game hopping on the retro pixel art aesthetic bandwagon because the devs of the game didn't have the time nor money to make high def look good. They'll take it home and then they'll boot it up. On the surface most players wouldn't be able to tell the difference but they'll be able to feel the difference. Because there will be no more shitty abrupt animation transitions, pixel art rag dolls, inverse kinematics, and silky smooth multiple animation blending. All in all, the best goddamn 2D pixel art character controller on the face of this fucking planet. At least that's what I've been trying to do for the past two and a half months now. And I'm right about here in the whole system. The next problem that we're gonna be working on though is the overall animation system. But before we move on to that, if you'd like to help me create the best goddamn 2D pixel art character controller, you're already doing that just by being here and watching this video. So thank you very much for taking an interest in this whole game development journey. Good to have you here. If you would like to help me out even more though, recently the web dev lads and I have gotten the rainy.gg blog up and running. And I've detailed the next goal for the fund in a blog post over there. There'll be a link in the description to that bad boy. If you would like to help me achieve this goal, then we've got some pretty nice rewards on the website to make becoming a member as worthwhile as possible, or at least try to. Right now, if you join, you'll get access to all my source code, the brand spanking new randy.gg monospace font for all your code editors. I've been using it in mine. It's really quite nice on the eyeballs, if I do say so myself. And you'll also get access to our little crack den community on Discord, along with a role, where you'll be able to find the contents of my rambling brain every day. I'm also pretty active on there, so if you want to swing by, ask a question, say hi, you can do that if you want. I've got an actual shit ton more things planned for this little member community coming up very soon. So yeah, if you derive any value from those things, it's currently only five Aussie dollars a month to join. Or alternatively, if you've got an Amazon Prime account, you can go to twitch.tv slash Randy, chuck a subscription over there with Prime Gaming, and then go to randy.gg slash Prime to link your whole Twitch account and essentially just get a free membership that way. Anyway, back to the video. Now that you know why I'm doing all of this, uh, it's really just a matter of doing the rest of it. The next big step is completing a basic animation system because right now we're really just cycling between the raw keyframes at the moment. Obviously that's not very cash money. Now to make this look good, we're gonna be using a little special something known as linear interpolation. You have point A, point B, you wanna get this point in the middle, do some fucking math, and there you go. You're welcome for that incredibly detailed explanation. And that right there should be a nice linear interpolation between the previous and the next frame. So if all goes well, we should have an animation being played back. Oh! Best time, baby! Holy shit! God damn! Linear interpolation between keyframes. Boop! Now that animations are done, it's time to move on to materials. Now the idea was to use materials to give our boy Ronald some color, right? But since the GLTF formats materials default to something called physically based rendering, AKA a bunch of dumbass math that I really cannot be bothered unpacking. So as everybody's favorite Satanist would say, I'm going to put this as delicately as I know how. You can short all my balls. You know what we're gonna do instead? We're gonna put the color directly in the vertex data with a little bit of painting. Hey, look, I know what you're thinking. Picasso, am I right? Have we successfully taken color from Blender and put that into the game engine? Let's find out. When I hit the F3 button, it will run. It should give us this. 
Our boy, our boy has made it. He's made the journey. Look at him go. It is full colored and animated glory. Isn't that lovely? That right there is everything we need. Everything we need to make a simple pixel art cell shader. Before we move on to that though, you know what's even cooler than cell shading? A smooth segue into this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Hang on, stop, don't skip through this. Look, even if you've heard of Skillshare before, just give me like 20 seconds after I explain it to all these fuckers who've been living under a rock. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators, explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. All right, now that's out of the way. Let's go over how much of a body game changer this site actually is. For the longest time after finishing work, I'd just lay on the couch and just completely zone out and watch like Netflix, YouTube, just doom scroll social media. You name it, right? Now, instead of doing that, I just boot open a good Skillshare class that I'm working my way through at the moment. And the funny thing is, I derive literally the exact same, if not more value and enjoyment out of that than just zoning out and watching Netflix. Who said learning couldn't be just as fun, you know? If you find a good course that you care about, then it will be just that. A class that I'm taking on there at the moment is uh, probably from one of my all time favorite YouTubers, uh, Nathaniel Drew. It's called Document Your Life, Four Methods to Live More Intentionally, where he goes over, well, exactly that it's a good title i guess it's just giving me this incredibly simple but effective way of just kind of holding on to all the key moments in my life it's kind of what i do with these devlogs already that's kind of just like my work life but it's kind of trying to apply that to my personal as well so yeah, it's something that I'm really excited to get into and start sharing with you guys. Uh, it was actually probably the reason for that first fun goal that I was talking about earlier. Kind of just a full circle on that one. But yeah, can't recommend that one enough. Uh, if for whatever reason that's not gelling with you, there's literally thousands of other classes covering all sorts of topics like photography, creative writing, film and video, productivity, freelance and entrepreneurship, web development, animation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there will definitely be something that will interest you. Uh, it's all curated specifically for learning. No annoying ads they'll always be launching new premium classes and facilitating the whole ecosystem that way for all the uh, members who join up first 1000 people to follow the link in the description will get a one month free trial for skillshare so you can go ahead and get crack a whack and with all those wonderful classes enjoy thanks to skillshare for sponsoring this video yet another excellent genuine sponsorship so that's always great anyway cell shading for those of you who don't know what cell shading is it's basically kind of like a cartoony shading thing what's that app called shader toy so we're gonna take this shader and we're just gonna apply it to our boy ron and hopefully just get some good shading going right now cell shading all right let's see if that works <laughs> all right guys see you later video over and we carbon date. i think it's time we finally take big ron and put him in the game i did actually go ahead and make a big Ron ages ago it's chad dublin yeah look at that to make this bad boy i followed a good tutorial series by sebastian log i'm probably not pronouncing that right but 10 out of 10 wood 3d model again all that's left to do to get this bad boy up and running is to give him some burns and chuck in an animation Ah, it's been four days since I've been juiced up. It's time to get some goddamn work done. There we go. I guess the first thing to do is to test whether or not the animations are working and clearly they are not. Is it just me or does that look like the fold animation? In fact, I think it is. Yeah, so I'm actually using little run. All right, so if I change this to normal run and then change this to wiggle. Look at that. Look at him go, dude. While the basics of the animation system might be all sorted, our boy run is still looking like shit. So it's time to unshit him. That's right. I speak English. So we could just try and smooth shader somehow in the shader, uh, which is probably gonna be the way to go. So let's just say we've smooth shaded it, right? We want it to look like this in game. On a flat shaded polygons, all vertex normals point in the same direction. In smooth shading, they bend around the surface. Oh, hang on a minute. So if I actually export with smooth shading on, then the vertex normals are actually going to be smooth. Have I been cocking myself this entire time by not switching to smooth shading? Hang on a minute. Yes! My god, that's beautiful. That makes so much goddamn sense now. Who knew that there was a difference between flat shading and smooth shading and that it wasn't just a blender renderer thing? So at this step, I wonder what this is going to look like now if we do the cell lighting. Oh, that is exactly what I want, dude. Fuck yes. We chuck this down in a pixel art. We only have a certain amount of colors. Before I go any further, I actually just want to just do some fucking vertex painting in here. All right, let's use that. 
Hey, look at that, baby. Run walking hella naked. Oh, this is looking good though, dude. This is looking so good. It's just a matter of combining lighting together properly. I've got everything that I need to play around with this. Let's start playing around. Uh, we've just got baseline ambient, so that just goes from zero to one. Uh, diffuse, so that goes from zero to one. That's our diffuse lighting. Now, specular is what I want to try and figure out. So this basically makes it more shiny. We probably want something around about eight. This will be the shader for the time being. It still needs a bit of work, but it's time to move on to bigger and brighter things. Three entire months worth of work led up to that very moment right there. I'm really not exaggerating when I say that that was the hardest problem I've ever tackled in my life. And if you want to see the second hardest problem I've ever tackled in my entire life, go ahead and click on this video right here. Give me those watch hours, baby. See you next month.